Hey Heritage, welcome back for part two of a really great conversation with Terry and Hannah Miner. Uh, last week we got to hear how God moved in their life early on in their marriage, um, with the passing of Terry's father and all the great things. And this week we really get to dive into their story about how God brought them here and how they became part of our family. So let's jump right in and listen to this conversation. I want to know your transition here. Power story. And then I so want to cool. hear about your testimony with your babies, little babies. your little babies, yes. because that has to do with yeah. him too. So I want yeah. to hear that. That's okay. What I hear well, about. how we got connected well, yes, with yes, them yes. is um, that's from when I was young, like just growing up in church. You know, you have like magazines and CDs and books and mm -hmm. tapes and all that. Their stuff, KC, uh, KCM, Kim Copeland Ministries, material was just always around. Mm -hmm. House, uh, dad's, you know, church, ministry, offices. So yeah. it was like, I always saw it. So it was always familiar faces. I probably was like not even 10 or 11 or so when I started noticing the difference in my daddy where like he's not around so much. <sighs> and you start hearing the name Copeland get brought up and then you find out he's actually with them. And then all of a sudden, as I grew up, I started learning more and more. Oh, that's who these people are. And this mm -hmm. is what they're doing. And this is, oh, and that's, then as I'm, you know, a young mind, I'm, I'm, it's, it's coming together. Oh, these are the same people that's doing super kid stuff in the movies that yeah. we saw when yeah. we were kids. Like, so it was like that for me coming up in like, oh, like when, when my dad was home to be with the Lord, I said, God, I said, this is, uh, this ain't just, you know, God, you know, they ain't my, this is my, bio, they ain't just biological. That's spiritual father as well. I'm, I'm, I was I was I was around my dad 24 seven inseparable like yeah. like literal literally literal needed something. literally yeah. yeah like literally like literally like you didn't see him without me like like how Jerseyville said when his dad played his dad played on the baseball team and he was with his dad when he was a little boy that was me same exact age I was with my dad at all his baseball games mm -hmm. I'm in the I'm in all the team pictures because I couldn't stand not being in my dad's arms is what my mom said so all his team pictures with all the grown men I'm in his arms like it was like that right so. I'm like, it felt like I didn't have that no more when he went. So it was like, not just that part. I need a spiritual father because this is different. Church, like, I know I'm going to do it, but I got a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I don't know how anything works on the back end because I'm just around my date observing as a kid and just want to be around him. I ain't pinching how stuff works. Yeah. What, how things function. <laughs> yeah, it's not just Emails somebody getting up and, there and, and staff yeah. and people and things you yeah. do. It's like, what, uh, like, all this is like, man, it's like. Whew, like pray for your pastors, everybody. Pray for your pastor. <laughs> pray for your pastor and your pastor's wife. And and like so, um, and then God spoke to me and I was in my dad's chair. He said, He said, Isn't I that said I'll do exceeding abundantly above what you ask or think? That that remember that yeah. was a prayer. He said, He said, Yes. No, uh, I, I answered him and said, Yes. He said, All right, well, make that your prayer concerning your spiritual father. And then I saw I received my spiritual father by faith, and I made it my prayer. I said, Lord, I'm believing you to do exceeding above what I could ask her to think concerning me having a spiritual father in my life uh, moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until uh, probably not even a month later mm -hmm. where he established it. He contacted me, reached out to me, and oh, he established really? it. And then, and you yeah, were still in Tennessee. You hadn't come I was down in Tennessee. Yeah. Then we went on to preach and pastor the church for three years and six months. And then when did you eventually – decide to come down here because wait you y'all visited uh the believers convention first yes. right before y'all moved down here y'all went to the for years oh, before okay okay mm -hmm. and so what made you decide to move down here i was there by myself first and then the next year hannah came to southwest and then and then we and then she had the same experience that i told her the first year i said something felt really different i don't know about time i said i don't know how to explain it but if i feel like such a connection with KCM in the area of being here instead of just being there, but like a partner, mm -hmm. but it felt like I was supposed to like be here. Like we were here. supposed to be there, yeah. But, but we didn't know what, like God a bigger picture. But years later, God didn't tell me about the movie. He told Hannah. He put it on her heart. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he didn't say it to me. He said it no. to her, and like, and like three months went by because I was in, I was on the ceiling, the edge of the bed, and I'm reading "The Faithful Shall Flourish" by Jerry Savelle, and I get to like the page, um, like page six or seven. I, th I think it was page six when he's talking about a rightful tree cannot. Um, rightfully flourish until it's in the soil it was intended to be planted in. Mm -hmm. And it, and he's going on about this soil and these trees. And so as he's mentioned on this subject, I wasn't thinking about my life or nothing. I'm just, I'm just allowing him to minister to me personally through one-on-one uh, -on -one from God through Jerry Savelle to Terry Minor Jr. while I'm reading the book. And all of a sudden, God showed me Hannah as I'm reading it and said, she heard from me. <laughs> 
This is months. This is this Listen is two. To this your is what he like, was yes, saying. Clap, this clap, is clap. like to your wife. exactly right. Uh-huh. Exactly. And then he gave me responsibility because he gives the head many responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And the response he gave me is, "Hey," he said, "Now it's your responsibility to to, to pray for all concerning answers concerning this and directions." And about and it was like a seven to eight month process of praying on it every now and then. And I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch it for months because there was nothing. And my spirit concerning that, I had a release, and then he'll bring it back up to me, and then he mm-hmm. was then he would speak on it again, and then time would go by, he was speaking on it again, and then it got to the end, um, towards the fall of 2019, where he instructed me and said, "Pray in the Holy Ghost for three days straight, and don't pray about not one other thing." And by the end of those three days, you'll have every answer you need about everything with this whole transition. Uh, 17 minutes on the first day, like 80 to 90 percent answers came wow. of what to do, where to. S- what to do with the church? People say you shut the church down. You did it, and and when it, the Lord showed me where to sow my members into, to w- where to s- uh, sow my sheep into a different congregation. He mm-hmm. he, sh- he showed me where, um, and uh, and he and he told me he said, um, some some may already have somewhere they know in their spirit was was where where, where they, they will be. be led and have peace to go. Mm-hmm. And he told me to tell them, but this is for those who don't know, and where would your shepherd trust you being a sheep? Mm-hmm. And so. It was awesome, awesome ministry. Shout out, huge shout out to Pastors Ed and Laura King. They are awesome ministers. Um, they do ministry. Um, they're a word of faith as well. But um, they they are awesome people. I uh, preached there a few weeks ago in uh, East Tennessee. Um, but uh, so we um, sold them there. And the funny part I want to mention that is because a lot of people mention the the victory side, the and 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 the 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 the. the uh, Glittery side, but mm-hmm. they don't mention the other side or the sides of disobedience, the sides of this yeah. and that. So I do want to mention that on purpose. Um, so it was about um, it was it was about one to two months of me still having church as a church when God told me not to. Yeah, and it was me struggling with, with that area and that space of, um, you know, because wanting to know how yeah. and, and 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 you All can't you can't let your human side be uh, stronger than your spirit man concerning. I need answers and I need yeah. details so I know what to do. Like, no, then it doesn't require faith. So first of all, you you heard good. from me, but now you're not in faith because you need these details. That's yeah. good. You don't just like Abraham. He didn't need details. All we need is a word from God. And you That's do it. it. You're going to text us, but where are you going to go? I don't know. I don't have <laughs> I don't to know. know. I know he said go. Mm-hmm. That's what I have to know. Yeah, us and our babies so, are you, Hall. Yes, exactly. And so when we did all that and that transition, he spoke. And the reason why I want to bring that part up too is because, you know, people go through those different pockets and spaces in their life based on everything isn't just all bad and everything was perfect. It was, there were there, there, there was some still having church mm-hmm. where I knew I was supposed to stop when I walked in and I'm in the lobby, close the door behind me in the lobby. Jesus was not there. He was not. He's my savior, but he, he was not there at all. What you're trying to do now is just you. Dang. And then so, but I knew at that moment, that he was confirming. I said my time was up here, yeah. didn't I? People were still getting bodies were still getting healed. I mean, but he, but he's so gracious, and it's like it's worth it just to obey. And so, and then it got to that point where we finally got that leading and, and uh, through those three days of prayer, we and we literally acted left on it, in like a week, left. like one week. It was like you're like, up. right, we we know we got to do, we got to get. I remember yeah. thinking my best friend lived down the street, and I wanted to see her baby be born before we left. That was my main thing. Like, yes, God, we're coming. I can do this in a week. Like, we can pack it all up and get it on the U-Haul, yeah, but I right. must see that baby be born. Like, I must. It's Lindsay. Which was, Kai she, Kai. she talked about her Baptist background. That was her small group leader. And Lindsay was my small group leader yeah. at my church in middle school and high school. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Well, I'm so glad that y'all made it here. Oh, thanks. Glad y'all made it here. Glad you eventually got here, yes. you know. Thank you. But I want, speaking of babies, yes. I want to get to this. I want, okay. I want, if this is the last thing we do, I want to get to it, is... Your the story about your baby. I mean, those are spiritual babies. Those are faith babies that you believed in. Tell us about that. Okay, so while we're uh, while we're living in this tiny bedroom on our broken futon and working full time and doing makeup for who knows what reason am I doing makeup, Lord? (laughs) Um, I remember um, I got pregnant once, had a miscarriage. Got pregnant again, had a miscarriage. Got pregnant a third time. On the way to um, a makeup training in Florida, they f- they'd fly us out for training with like the pros, which was the coolest thing ever, just to be able to experience once a year. And um, they would teach us all the tips and tricks and all the things. But I found out I was pregnant right before I was about to leave. And I was like, I'm not having a miscarriage. And so Terry handed me 
Jerry Savelle's book. Jerry Savelle's uh, ministry just led us this whole way. Who knew that we'd be connected yeah, and going to church here now? Here, yeah. Like, totally. Oh, I'm a, huh? no, 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 don't forget that part about what I handed you. Yes. But the timing, the icing on the cake concerning co- confirmation of timing, when I said, God, show me one word, one last word about Before it's time leave. to quit. And then I opened the mailbox, and Terry Savelle Foy's mail was written in oh, all yeah. red caps, and, and, and it, it covered the whole side from top to bottom. It says, time to quit. Before we left oh. from Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. But he, 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 he just surveils <laughs> every step of the way. Every step of the That's way. It's been like, yeah. whoa, God. Yeah. So back to the makeup in the, thing. In the book. So the scary. book, yeah. uh, if Satan can't sell your joy, he can't keep your goods. And that's what I gave yeah. And he gave me that before I got on the plane. So I'm like there for one day, automatically start having signs of miscarriage. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, I'm all the way to Florida. This isn't happening. It's not. It can't be. And I'd already seen a doctor you know, take extra folic acid, do all the things, you know? And so anyway, I start having signs. They immediately um, come up to my room. They're like, you need to get home ASAP. You need to go see a doctor. I called my doctor. They set me up an appointment. Um, so I'm pretty much miscarrying my third child on the way back home from this makeup trip. And, uh, but I had that book. Mm-hmm. And I read it the whole ride home. And I was so like, I remember running into a doctor on at the airport because there were so many terminals. And our little Knoxville airport only has like three terminals. Yeah. And I remember being like, I'm so lost. How do I even do in this airport? Like I was so overwhelmed. Like I'm miscarrying this child. I can't figure out where in the world I go for my terminal. Like little, <laughs> little Anna was just so confused. And I remember sitting and having so much peace on that plane, reading Jerry Savelle's book of saying, cancel your joy, can't keep your goods. And then I got home and my husband who doesn't cook is on the stove making me crack up, making me ravioli <laughs> because he, he doesn't know these things. But he's like, I'm going to do it for you because it's, it's, it's going to be okay. You know? And so just encouraging what a man. me doing all the things. And um, so then we, Southwest Believers Convention... So we're like up in the nosebleed section. I'm like, I'm going to go with you this year. So we both went. Um, it was right around Terry's dad just passed away. I just gone through this awful, the third miscarriage I'd just been through. And, uh, and we heard Copeland say, Terry Minor, is Terry Minor in here? And we're like, I, <laughs> I'm still like, is this real right now? And the lady beside me is like, and then I'm like, That's you. And we're talking. The lady beside me is catching on. She's like, go. Go, yeah. go. And I'm like, you go. I got all the stuff here. You go. So Terry goes down out of the nosebleed section. Tanya's father-in-law, Michael Flowers, was down there. And he helped, you know, Terry. They pretty much hand Terry. We were because we was in the, we're it, in was so <laughs> it was so dark. We were in nosebleed. It was so dark. Way up that house. I was like, well, if I leave my purse and my camera, like, no one's really going to take it because we're at a convention. So maybe I can go with him. Like, all these thoughts are going through oh, my head. But then I'm like, no, I need to film this we're for his mom. Christians. I'm going to take my purse. So I get out my camera to film it for his mom. Like. All these and so how did you head. get down there? So then after well, Terry yeah. takes the mic and like ministers, which uh, was it? But, but, yeah. God, we've been through this and this and this. Well, and guess what? We're still holding he on. He told me like, to go. He said, yeah, he just said what the Lord told me to say. But after that, I had, how, how he knew the, um, the Lord uh, had led him to call you down to know you was there was, I had talked about the miscarriages. Mm. Yeah. Like we've been through all about, of this. Mm-hmm. But I was telling people why you don't stop on your faith. Yeah. And why your faith has continued. But I was just mention what God was, was telling me. And he stopped. And he heard. He said, all right, Lord, I'll do that. He said, tell her come down here. And then I said, stand up, wife. And then she, <laughs> everybody <laughs> lost it. And she, she stood here. up. And you know how Hannah is. <laughs> no, I'm like she's crying. Time and she's crying. <laughs> her hands are up. And she's waving her arms. <laughs> you see this little white hand from the nose coming come out of shadows. And I just laughed all my stuff. I'm like, forget it. It's the shadows. moment. Leave yeah. your stuff. Like God is doing they, something. And they bring yes. her down, and she just she comes down crying. She's just <laughs> just ready. Just, just ready. God, just ready. ready. We had just yeah. been through so much for so many years yeah. of like battle, 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 battle. You're like, I'm still in this. But you know, you heard from God. I'm still in yeah. this. And we knew we heard yeah. from God mm-hmm. through the whole way. Like we want to just be in this. Well, how you operate? Going how you this. function? Yes. How you work? How you serve? How yeah. You stay faithful through all. It. Yeah. Yeah. Word from word. And so uh, he prays over me. I received my healing. Um, and it was the most amazing moment. Your parents were there. Mm-hmm. Um, they said that they were like, they remember it. Nikki remembers it. It's so cool because these people I know now were like, I was there. I remember that moment. And, and people were on their feet shouting and screaming, just in agreement with us that I was yeah. going to see this baby. And say so what he said, say what God said through him to you. By this exact He time said, by this year, t- exact time next year, you will have a beautiful, a beautiful healthy baby. baby. And it was literally like that within that time. So I get pregnant. Um, I get pregnant. I had also seen a specialist, like done all the things that a woman would do. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've done all the things. 
the doctor that I've seen, we're not going to go into that, but the Lord gave me the right person to help me through my pregnancy, which I'm very grateful for. But even then they gave me blood thinners. They did tons of blood work on me. They said I had a blood clotting disorder, all these different things. But even during that pregnancy, when I'm doing all the things the doctors told me to do, I'm taking all the shots, all the blood thinners, my body still tried to miscarry my son. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was like, this is not happening. And Terry turned to me and I was like sitting on the couch and he said, no, he said, we will see this baby in nine months. He said, and we're going to keep joy before our eyes. And so we literally, I watched Glory Copeland's healing school, like all day, every day. Healing school fast. I never, I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell anybody that I feel like would not have the same faith as where mm-hmm. I was with believing. Well, for it this. goes back to what she said. If you're not, if you, if you don't have the faith, don't come in the room. Yes, that's exactly. Yeah. Like don't even. And so I love you. I appreciate you. But yeah. this is where I'm at right now. Yeah. And like I'm, my body is showing all signs. If, if a woman, if you've ever gone through miscarriage, my body is, is doing all the things. Mm-hmm. And I had to learn in that moment to love my body despite what it was trying to do. And I remember speaking to little Terry when he was in my womb and be like, you're a fighter. You're strong. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we're going to see you. And I was like, they, I had to learn love your body like thank you body that you're doing everything you're supposed to do for this child Mm -hmm. despite what i was seeing in the physical it was all about coming back to the supernatural and the spiritual with god and being like no my god is fighting for me my body's doing what it's supposed to and terry you're strong in there so i always called him like he's gonna be my little fighter when he comes out he's gonna be strong and um and so i was on bed rest for like six months it was so long and literally just fed myself joy i turn on something happy i watch healing school turn on something happy watch healing school couldn't do anything else. Had to step back from my job, which was also another faith thing because mm-hmm. my job brings income to our family. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Lord was faithful. And so Terry was born. And now I have my healthy boy. But I also have my little surprise Tilly. Yeah. Who um, I, I believe for with her pregnancy specifically, I said, I will be able to enjoy my whole pregnancy. Because with Terry, I was like on the edge of my seat the yeah. whole time. Like, you know, I can't walk. I can't do this. I can't do that. And so I said, risk. I'm specifically going to be able to enjoy my pregnancy with Tilly. And I did like fully no complications at, they put me on bed rest for one week just to make sure I was good. And then after that, I enjoyed everything with her. And so it was a total blessing. But what's so cool now is to see where my faith was in believing for my kids. Mm-hmm. And now I get to work for this ministry that has brought us literally through so many seasons seasons of our life yeah in our faith walk and now i get to like love on all these other babies and so it's just such a blessing to me oh sorry this is our children's pastor <laughs> this is our children's pastor yes so it's just awesome to see what god's done yeah and i truly believe that that faith that i use believing for my kids are um is what the lord wants to put into our children here at heritage of faith yeah you know what i mean i truly believe that there was a, a reason and a purpose that it, I believed for so long in all the elements and all the things that went into believing for having a child to now where I am, where I get to mother, in a sense, these sweet children, right. you know, right. in a faith atmosphere. So really awesome. God is oh, awesome. This yeah, is God so is so good. Awesome. This room is dusty. I don't know who's responsible for cleaning this place. Someone's cutting onions this up in here. a lot. Yeah. 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 a week off. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, this is going to be ha. Huh. That was so crazy. That's awesome. Um, I mean, it's a great, it's a great story. It's a great out of the box. St- I mean, everything from the beginning to the end. And so there's probably so many more elements that I, we I, can. I know, I like know. God did anything. We could go on forever. It's so, it's so powerful, which is why I kind of am happy that we're leaning into this question. All right. Our motto here. Hannah, you might know. know this. You might know this. Oh wait, what question's um, about to happen? Is that <laughs> making winners in life? I mean, that is the ministry's motto. Its theme. It's our. Every one of us just, just walk that out. So for you guys specifically, what does that mean to you when we say making winners in life? Oh, would it make oh like like our conviction? All right. Uh, make the winners in life. Um it starts with salvation first. Okay. Uh I would say most certainly, uh because you have so many people that think they can be uh successful. Um without God, but you aren't truly succeeding until you know Jesus. And then, um, cause you you can have, um, you can prosper in many other places, but if you're not prospering in your soul, you're not truly prospering. And the only way to fully prosper in your soul is to have a close relationship, intimate relationship and know who Jesus is and who he actually is based on God being love. Um, and our, our, our motto, well, with our ministry TMIM is, uh, souls will be one, bodies will be healed 
and the word will separate people from bondage. So it's basically still cohesive and parallel right there with making winners in life. Um, winning in your health, um, in your soul, in your mind, will and emotions. Um, winning concerning, <laughs> you're no longer, you're, you are no longer going to hell because <laughs> you gave your life to Jesus, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is the truth. And um, in that aspect of making winners in life, and I love that. And, uh, and it's even, you know, you go to JSMI, uh, website and you read the about page on uh, Jerry Savelle has been on there for many years about how he turned him from a nobody into a somebody and the only way only one who could truly do that is Jesus Christ and um, that's where it starts is is it, it starts with Jesus and he he's the author and finisher of our faith so that's where it is it's, it's, it's Jesus it's good. good yes I agree <laughs> great <laughs> I love that I love you Tanya <laughs> All right. Well, thank y'all so much for joining us. We this are. Was fun. We it, it really was. We are so honored that y'all came and did this. I know Hannah, you've been in this before, but it was great to have you tell your story and then have your husband Yay! come and tell his story. Um, linked in the show notes will be their website, the Heritage Kids Instagram page, and Terry preaching here if you have never heard him preach. And we will see you next week for winning conversations. <laughs>